Sticky Goose, the self-proclaimed bad guy of the YouTube comic collecting community, recently made what I consider to be a mistake in one of his videos. But I also realized that I have been guilty of making that same mistake. And so I wanted to share my thoughts about the video to get all of us thinking about whether or not we all are making that mistake. So what am I talking about? Well, about a week ago, he made some comments on people wasting their money on sending certain books off to be graded at CGC. And at first, I found myself agreeing with a lot of what he said until he made these comments on a video that my friend Jacob from Jacob Comics made. I recently watched another video, this this poor guy. He, he sent in a bunch of the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man um, run, like the, the 90s Spider-Man run. I mean, he, he sent in like multiple copies of like issue number three and like eight and stuff. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? You're just setting yourself up for failure. If any of these don't come back a 9.8, which I don't think he pre-screened it, it's like, what are you doing? Like, you're just throwing money out the... Uh, you should never be grading a book that is less valuable than the grading fee. Like, that is just... I don't know. I feel like it's like common sense because if it doesn't come back the grade that you want, and more often than not, it doesn't, like, you... This is a horrible waste of money. So, as you can see from his comments, he clearly thought that Jacob had made a poor decision in sending those books off to be graded. And if I was just watching the video and didn't know Jacob, I probably would have thought the same thing. But I do know Jacob, and so I knew that by the time Sticky had made his comments, that Jacob had actually sold that book on an Instagram live sale and made a $10 profit off of it. Now, obviously, that's not mind-blowing money, and he made a bigger profit on books that came back at higher grades, but he didn't lose money on that book. So seeing Sticky's comments, yet knowing Jacob's actual situation, made me realize a few things. First of all, I have to be really careful about making value judgments on people when I don't have all the information. I mean, certainly if Sticky had known Jacob had sold that book for $35, then he wouldn't have considered him to be, oh, this you know, poor guy, or really, uh, yeah, yeah, if you read between the lines, yeah, Sticky was, didn't say this, but yeah, Saul Jacob is a sucker, right? This, look at this sucker that did this. And I would have been tempted to make that same value judgment, I think, if all I had seen was the video. And so that woke me up to see, wow, you know, how many value judgments have I made on other collectors about them wasting their money or making a foolish decision or whatever it might be when I didn't have the complete information? Secondly, I realized, and if you work really hard, you can be more successful in this hobby if you're looking to make money at it. Because the reason that Jacob was able to sell that book for $35 is because he's really grinded with Instagram live sales. And pretty much every time I open Instagram in the evenings, I, I see that he's selling books. And so he's worked really hard and that's put him in a better position. Or even when he gets some books that don't come back at the grades that he is hoping that they come back for, that he can still turn a profit on them. Now, you know, if you go back and watch Jacob's original video, which I'll put in the description below, you can see uh, the, the one that Sticky highlighted, of course, is about the worst. There's two really, really bad ones, but Jacob still made a $10 profit on, on both of those, especially because he cleans and presses his own books, and so he only has to pay the actual grading fees. Obviously, there's time he has to put into to doing the clean and pressing, but again, if he can make a $10 profit at, 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 at the floor of, of these books, then he's doing pretty good. But that, once again, comes through his hard work. And so if any of us really want to make money at this hobby, which you don't have to, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, but, but if that is your goal to make money, well, you've, like anything, you've got to work hard at it 
and my friend Jacob has, and so kudos to him. Now, before I go on, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, of course, I'd appreciate it if you consider doing so now. Now, before I made this video, I reached out to Jacob to make sure that he would be okay with me talking about this because, of course, he does, from Sticky's video, come out looking like, like a sucker, and so I didn't want to highlight that if he didn't want me to. And, of course, he knew that I was going to defend him, so he wasn't concerned so much about that. But one thing he was rightly concerned about is that, well, if, if you watch this video, you might say, oh, well, well, Jacob might not be the sucker, but whoever bought that book from him, they're the sucker. And then people might look badly at Jacob thinking, well, this guy's just some kind of scam artist who's suckering people into buying these worthless books. But having known Jacob and, and and his show and having you know tuned in a few times, I, I know that that's not the case. You know, if you if you know Jacob, he's like you know, the one of the nicest guys that there is, and he's not scamming people. And in fact, all of his customers talk about how excited they are to get these books in their hands, even these books that Sticky highlighted that. You know, from a, a a financial standpoint, certainly are not the best investments. They still get excited about them, and so something that that made me realize that that you know I think we all kind of know, but just really drove it home more for me, is that of course there's several reasons to be in this hobby. One of them, which which is really important to me, is to see it as an alternative financial investment and to try to make some money at it. You know, that, that's possible, but, but that's not the only reason to collect comics. And I think there's room for everybody at the table. You can have people like me who are you know, both collectors and investors, or you can have people that are just investors, and you can have people that are just collectors. I, I think all of those ways of collecting are valid, and I think it's important that that we recognize that and don't just think my way is the best way that oh you know you know whoever does this is a sucker or whoever does or you know you know collectors when they look investors can be like oh they're ruining the hobby they're not real fans or something like that and and I am I, I read a lot of comic books even though I also sell them uh, and a big part as I've talked about the reason I, I sell them is to put things in people's hands that they love. And this is the experience that Jacob has had with his customers that, his, that, that they love to pick up these books. And again, even though they're a waste of money at $35, it, it's not that to those collectors. They get excited about those books. They get a thrill out of adding them to their collection. And though you know, I wouldn't have paid $35 for those books, it was worth it to them. But it's their money. You know, like there are lots of things that if we just take a step back and we're thinking simply the financials are a waste of money. You know, if we go to see a movie in IMAX, you're going to be paying $25 to do that. Is that a waste of money? Uh, this upcoming Wednesday is, is Valentine's Day. And I know I'll be taking my wife somewhere. I, I hope Sticky Goose takes his wife, Mother Goose, out somewhere nice. And I will certainly be wasting money on a nice meal or a nice gift. I mean, pretty much any jewelry or flowers are, are waste of money in terms of their actual financial value. I mean, I guess diamonds you can resell. But you know, you're not going to get the return on investment that you could in the S&P 500 or, or something like that. But, but, but we're willing to spend money on those things because there's some kind of experience that we get that has value more than that money to us. And I think that's fine when it comes to comic collecting as well. And certainly we all, I think, intuitively again realize this. I mean, if, if you buy new comic you know, books on New Comic Book Day, you know, those in general are not going to be wise investments. Pretty much you're going to pay $5 for a book that six months from now you're going to be lucky to get a dollar back for it. And, and that's okay because people who buy comics that way are just really excited to read the story, 
right away before anyone else does and, and on that and it becomes kind of a ritual for people right new comic book day it's it's almost you know it can be almost like a religious experience like going to church you know i'm going to new comic book day and this is my weekly gathering with all my fellow comic collectors and just like on a sunday christians all over the world or at churches together on wednesdays comic collectors all over the world are buying their new comics and, and sharing in this experience and wasting money but but they're not really they're getting something from it and i'm speaking to someone who doesn't participate in new comic book day because you know, i'm more interested in comics as an investment and again i think that's okay for me to be that way but i i can't fault other people for being different than me in that regard and i think it can be the same way with sending off worthless books to CGC, even though you may not be able to recuperate your money for some category of collector, that's all right. They're not looking at the slabs again for that reason. Now, obviously, I'm not encouraging just complete financial irresponsibility. If getting tons of books graded is you know, putting you in debt or you know, you're having trouble feeding your kids or something like that, you know, obviously that's an issue. Just like if you went to Starbucks every day, but you're in debt, yeah, that, that's an issue. I mean, you've got to obviously get spending under control, but if you had this discretionary money and sending books off to CGC brings you happiness or buying a book on Jacob's show brings you happiness, then I mean, good for you. Again, it's not, not something I would do. So I'm not, I'm not defending something I would do. I, I don't make those decisions. I generally you know, fall into Sticky's line of thinking in terms of which books I would put my money into, but I'm happy if other people can have that experience just from having a, a slab, even on a, a worthless book. And, and, and for some people, I mean, that there's just this feeling of excitement that, that again, that comes from having any slab. It, it's just special to them. It's so again, like this r ritualistic, item that that you hold for, for people i mean there's a lot of you know religious fervor that can be in uh this community and 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 so it's like holding uh, i'm going to keep on using these church comparisons it's like holding you know the bread or the wine i yeah i don't know is that blasphemous maybe i i don't know but you know, i hope you get what I'm, I'm saying that there's just something about about touching these slabs that that give excitement uh, to people and something that's great about you know the service jacob offers is that people can get these objects in their hand for only 35 dollars which isn't that much money in the big scheme of things and so it creates an affordable entry point for collectors who just want to have some slabs where they don't have to go around spending 100 200 dollars on a key maybe they're just a todd mcfarlane fan and just want a todd mcfarlane slab well they can get one from jacob for 35 dollars, and they don't care that it's a 7.0 or a 7.5 or whatever it is it's just hey i've got this todd mcfarlane slab i own this this is exciting to me and again i think that's okay especially you know something else you can think about slabs of course if you're displaying them you can consider them like art and you know, if you're buying any random poster on Amazon and then buying a frame for it, I mean, you're going to spend 25 to $35 to do that. And so if your thing is comic books, well, instead of just buying some random poster, well, just get you know, a comic slammed. And again, if, if, you're, if you're thinking of this simply as a financial investment, it, obviously it's not that. But for some collectors, they're looking for more than a financial investment. I, hopefully I'm not going around in circles and beating a dead horse too much by saying that. Uh, but, but it's just something I am becoming more aware of. And so I really am, am thankful for how Sticky's uh, you know, video has caused me to think about this and to uh, appreciate the financial decisions that other people make and even if they would be different than my own. But, but you tell me what you think. Do you agree that sometimes buying a worthless slab or sending a worthless book into CGC actually can be worth it? Or is it always a poor decision and a waste?
Of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'd appreciate it if you consider doing so now. Thanks for watching. Like the video, comment. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.